Hey there, Redneck Preppies, Redneck Preppies. It's me, the Redneck Preppy. How you doing today? Great? Good. Another episode of Redneck Preppy Rages at Bubba Guns already? Well, usually it takes me a while to hunt up more firearms atrocities, but fortunately, and I'm not sure that's the right word to use, I came across another 15 sins against guns fairly quickly. Let's cut the chatter and get at her. All right, our first one is a... Uh, you know, I actually don't have a clue what this started out life as. All I know is that some enterprising Bubba took some kind of handgun and turned it into the world's worst carbine. Even Caltech engineers would look at this and wonder how much cocaine the designer was on at the time. I'm going to honestly assume this is a functional firearm, though to be honest with you, I'm not sure how it actually functions. I do know it's pretty Bubba. Mom, I want a FAMAS. No, we have a FAMAS at home. You know, I went for years without seeing some Bubba try and turn whatever rifle they owned into an air quotes FAMAS clone, but in the past two years it seems like Everyone is ruining perfectly good firearms to do it. Is it the forgotten weapons effect? Ian finally got his FAMAS, and now everyone else wants one. At least it was only an AR-15 which was wrecked this time. Still can't figure out why you'd turn a rifle into a clone of a bullpup, but have it feed from the front, though. I don't know if this is the dumbest thing we're going to see in this video, because frankly, there are some pretty good candidates coming up. But it would probably win place or show in most Bubba competitions. I don't know what caliber this monstrosity is chambered in, but judging by the magazine, I'd say it's a fairly hefty one to be firing this one-handed. The icing is the Picatinny rail and the low-end red dot optic on top. Somehow, I think whoever would be shooting this will get one shot, and follow-ups won't be much of a consideration. It's our first Mosin Nagant M9130 of the day. Yes, this isn't the only one. And I have to hand it to the Bubba for the century-spanning editions. First, you have the Mosin itself, which is largely a 19th century design. Then, he added an 18th century style blunderbuss muzzle flare on the barrel. But wait, we need some 20th century in there. Ah yes, the Chinesium red dot optic. And a fix to where the rear sight should be. Folks, one day we'll only have M9130s in museums, if we live that long. And let's remember that Bubba's were doing stuff like this to the ones we had. I told you there was more Mosin goodness. Not one, but two hand grips attached to this one. A sensible idea for a rifle that you have to move at least one hand in order to cycle. And the ubiquitous garbage tier red dot optic. This Bubba also decided to cut the barrel down and improve the stock with some modifications. <sighs> I don't know. Years of looking at murdered Mosin Nagants is probably like being a crime scene investigator. Eventually the carnage becomes old hat and, and you start cracking jokes while standing in a pool of someone's blood. Or in this case, the remnants of what this rifle used to be. I've come to realize that there's a holy, or unholy, trinity of guns which tend to be bubba The Mosin Nagant M9130 is a member, and here's number two, the Lee Enfield. This here was an SMLE. It might have seen action in the trenches of the First World War. Perhaps was in the North African desert in the second. Who knows how many fine men carried this rifle over the decades. And her reward? Some bubba cutting down the wood and replacing the foregrip area with some atrocity that's completely out of place on the rifle. For good measure, looks like they also replaced the rear sights and the original magazine with some janky aftermarket model. <sighs> Another English rose who will never be the same. 
You know, every time an AR-15 is bubbled, I keep saying that it's just another AR. But even some rot gut level rifle deserves better. Someone did quite a bit of work on this with the custom wood and some sort of finishing on the metal. End of the day, it's just another AR, but less than an AR at the same time. And apparently sights aren't needed on this masterpiece. What did I tell you? Everyone wants a FAMAS. Even AK owners. The first example built off an AR was a bit janky, but this thing looks like it was put together in the same cave that Tony Stark built his Mark I Iron Man suit. Except that thing looked cool and actually worked. This thing looks like all the builder had at his disposal was a Dremel and a sheet metal shear. Words fail me because I'm not sure what I should be mocking first. One thing though, you won't run out of attachments for side-mounted optics. Well, even though you won't be able to actually use any of them. If uh, sheet metal shears were the primary weapon of choice for the last one, an angle grinder clearly was used for this Glock 20. I don't pretend to be any great shakes when it comes to metalwork, but Jesus, even I could manage some straight lines when they're only about an inch long. What I don't get is why the need for more serrations than already existed on the slide. Oh, don't worry, I didn't forget about the quality home-executed stippling that's consumed over half the frame. You know, I'm told that Glocks are a bit subpar until you replace some parts, but I don't think this is what most people who argue that are actually referring to. The M1911A1 is under constant attack from yutzes who call it a FUD handgun that's only good for learning how to clear jams. Well, whoever owns this one was probably tired of hearing about how his pistol was a grandpa gun, and so he decided to modernize it with everything he could lay his hands on. An old school M16 grip, some cheap butt stock, a longer barrel, 3D printed, I don't know, I guess receiver, and to top it off, yes, a cheap optic straight from Wish. Wait, wait, I almost forgot about the bayonet up front. This is what happens with M1911 owners who develop a complex about their handgun. Fellow FUD pistol owners, listen not to the trolls and don't bubba, which was given to us by St. John Moses Browning. Yeah, 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 another Mosin and Gaunt. I have to hand it to this bubba, though. I've never seen an M9130 with the master key before. I haven't seen this much stuff hanging off a Mosin in some time. In addition to the shotgun, you got your bipod, and you got that optic system on top. An M9130 isn't a light rifle to begin with. I can't imagine carrying around all of this other stuff on top of it. I'm curious what mission requirement some chairborne commando put this thing together for. This one hurts. I wasn't sure at first whether this was a legit HK416. You know, it could have been a 416 and 22 long rifle masquerading as the real thing. But this appears to be a real rifle. So what do you do if you have an expensive and high quality rifle manufactured by a company that famously hates people who can't afford their products? Try and turn it into an FNP90. A wooden P90. What? No, not content with that evil, the owner also then slapped on every accessory known to God and man on every available inch of rail. I'm actually kind of impressed. And by impressed, I mean disgusted. I use the phrase icing on the cake in these videos on a semi-regular basis, but in this case, never has it been more deserved. I am talking about the homemade trigger bar that joins the front glommed on trigger to the actual trigger in the back. Bullpups already suck with well-designed trigger bars. I can only imagine how crappy this trigger is to pull. Well, if there is one humorous note about this atrocity, it may be the first time in recent military history that Belgium has managed to take over and destroy something German. We haven't had an SVT in one of these videos in a while, so 
here's another painful reminder of what can be done to Stalin's M1 Garand. I've said it before and I'll say it again. The SVT-40 is one of the prettiest rifles of the 20th century. Long and lean lines. It's like a Russian model. And like a Russian model, it can be temperamental. You live with it, though, because you know what you got. Someone, however, decided that this wonderful woman would look better looking like a white trash extra from the show Justified. There's a commie Vietnam flag in this picture. Man, I really hope this wasn't a bring back from the Vietnam War that someone destroyed in an attempt to do what they thought was improving the rifle. And here we go with the last of the trinity of guns most commonly bubbled, an SKS-45. This was a recent news story up here in Canada when a garage gunsmith decided to modify his carbine. Unnecessary news alert to Americans. Yes, Canadian gun laws are more strict than theirs. Shortening that barrel down alone will land you a hefty sentence up here and probably a ban against owning firearms. What the RCMP should have arrested him for was the horrific quality of the work. To call this a piece of garbage is too polite. This is level of work that even some bubbas would look down on. The final entry for today is yet again another SKS-45. Though the quality of work is far better than the last one, even if it still ended up ruining a fine lady. I guess someone wanted a Thompson, but couldn't afford either the real thing or a replica, so they grabbed Semenov's carbine and went to town on it. And yes, of course, it's bull pupped. And yes, yet again, another crap tier optic. This one, though, mounted so high over the bore that I'm tempted to believe it's actually some kind of joke. Either way, you're definitely going to be chin mounting on this baby. I don't get the pathological hatred that some people have for the SKS-45. I get it. It's not an AK and all that. But whatever else you can say about them, they are rugged and reliable. Well, they are before they're hammered on and turned into this thing. Alright, that's enough for today. My mental health can't take any more of this abuse. As always, I hope you found the video vaguely entertaining and mildly informative. Have yourself a great day and please... Whatever path life takes you down, don't bubba a firearm. God's watching you constantly to make sure. Take care and bye-bye.